will pre be presenting dynamic duo, and they are indeed one. Uh, <laughs> Co-presenting with virtual agents, which they are indeed doing. <laughs> Thanks, Regina, and thanks everybody for coming. Um, so my name is Ha Ching from Northeastern University, and this is my co-author and my co-presenter today, Las Loring. And here we have a special guest presenter today. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela. So together we are going to talk about how humans and agents can collaborate together to present a presentation. So there are millions of uh, presentations being made <laughs> every day. Oh. Sorry. Uh, being made every day, and some of us here are, could be really enjoying giving presentation, but many of us may be quite afraid of it. Uh, but as you say, God, I believe all of us have been all of us have been sitting through a lot of not so great presentations so far. Um, so why do we keep having uh, bad presentations? So lack of proper training and preparation is definitely one of the key reasons. Also, sp speech and language ability could be an issue as well. So as a non-native speaker myself, I find it really difficult whenever I need to speak in English. Also, uh, public speaking anxiety can be a big issue for many people. Um, but in fact, this is quite a common problem as well. So when uh, in a survey with more than 800 um, American college students, they found that 35% of them actually need counseling help for their public speaking anxiety. Um, so if you look more into why people uh, have uh, public speaking anxiety, so if you look into social impact theory, uh, they tell us that anxiety is a function of how many people in the audience and how many people that are presenting on the stage. So if you have more people that are watching you, and then your anxiety levels are going to be increased. But um, if you have more presenters, so your anxiety levels are going to decrease. So today I have co-presenter, my co-presenter, and I have a human uh, agent here. So anxiety level, my anxiety level should be uh, lower than usual. But of course, like it's not like I always have my human presenter with me. So how about having a, a virtual agent as your co-presenter? So here's Angela, and she knows a lot about how virtual agent works, and uh, she will be able to tell us a little bit on the background of how virtual agents would support our presentation. Thanks, Ha. So over the last 20 years, there have been quite a few attempts at using virtual agents, like myself, to support presentations. These systems range from virtual meeting rooms where agents act as virtual presenters, to systems that have two virtual characters co-presenting with each other. However, none of these systems looked at human-agent collaboration during a live presentation. Also, they often required the presenter to learn highly technical scripting languages to create the presentation. So that's exactly the motivation behind our dynamic project, our dynamic duo project, when we try to uh, explore the idea of having humans and agents collaborate to combine the strength of both of them in a presentation context. Um, so before we design our system, we want to have a better understanding of how human and human collaborate in a presentation context. Um, so what we did is we analyzed 15 TED Talks when we had two speakers talk to each other during a presentation. What we find is five common interaction formats that people use to collaborate to organize their co-presentations. So that can range from iterative tone typing to interviews or even debate. We also identify a range of verbal and nonverbal behaviors that people use when um, for introduction of the new topics or tr introduction of uh, the new speaker or for turn taking or transitioning between the presenters. So based on our analysis, we, use, uh, we uh, built our dynamic dual systems that consist of three components. Um, so here you have the virtual character that appear life size. We have a note authoring tool um, that provides you a very simple uh, interface for you to prepare your presentation and to prepare your six speaking notes for you and your co-presenter. And lastly, you have the presentation environment when you have your uh, co-presenter and you present live on the stage. Um, so what a nice thing about our system is that everything is integrated into PowerPoint, so it should require minimal training and technical skills for the user to create the presentation. So now let's talk about um, each of these components in more detail. So here's our agent, a 3D character. Um, she speaks using... Hmm. 
she speaks uh, using speech decider and she can, ex uh, she can express a range of nonverbal behaviors. So here you can see she can do body posture, uh, hand gesture, um, facial expression, uh, uh, and a range of other nonverbal behaviors. And most of the uh, nonverbal behaviors here are actually automatic, automatically generated by our system using a linguistical analysis of what the agent is going to speak. Uh, but of course, if you want to have a better control of her behaviors, you can also manually add them in. Uh, so now let's talk about note offering tool, about how you can prepare your presentation using our agent. Uh, so now Angela is going to take you through um, our tool. Sure. Let me show you how it works. So, you start making your slides as usual, then open up the co-presenter notes panel to prepare speaking notes for you and me. We have already organized the notes into three sections, introduction, main points, and transition to the next slide. In each section, you can add different note segments. For each segment, you can decide whether you or me will be presenting it. As Ha said, most of my nonverbal behaviors are generated automatically, but you can also add them in manually using our nonverbal behavior menu. While you prepare the notes, you can open the preview panel to see how I will present my parts. Once you have finished, you can click the start button, and we are ready to go. So once you're ready to present, you enter your presentation environment when you can actually see in here. So you have a slide up there. You have a virtual agent projected on a standing display. Um, and I have present a note on in front of my screen. Um, so I use the control, remote control to tell the agent to start speaking. And while she starts speaking, she can advance the slide herself and play all the animation needed during the, her presentation. Uh, and when she's not speaking, she's actively listening to our presentation. Um, so here we have a tool here, but um, did it actually help anybody at all? Um, so now I would like uh, to introduce my uh, co-presenter, Alas Law, and he's going to talk about how we evaluated our system. All right. Um, so as Ha said, we developed this tool, but the question is, does it actually do anything? Do the presenters want to use it, and do judges actually think this helps any? Um, so what we did is we evaluated on both sides, the pr uh, participants and the judges, for within subjects experiment where we had uh, people come in and they had 30 minutes to prepare uh, slides. So we had pre-prepared slides we gave them. They had 30 minutes to read through them, learn the notes, uh, all the content, et cetera. And then they had seven minutes to actually give the talk. And either they gave the talk alone, like this, or they gave the talk with Angela. Um, and in the case of Angela, Angela would cover half the slides to actually be the co-presenter. Um, so what we ended up doing is we recruited uh, eight native speaking participants and five non-native speaking participants. Uh, sadly, one of the native speaking participants had to be dropped due to technical difficulty between the ages of 23 and 62. And what we did is we gave them a bunch of measures to actually try to evaluate this. So we measured state anxiety uh, before every presentation to see kind of how scared they were when they were about to give the presentation. Uh, we measured speaker confidence at intake and after both presentations, so how well they think they did after they gave these presentations with or without the agent. And then we also uh, gave them a variety of measures about the agent themselves, did they enjoy working with it, et cetera, followed by a short semi-structured interview just to kind of get their thoughts. So what did we find? Well, we found that for non-native speakers, the system actually did work. So it significantly decreased anxiety for non-native speakers, and for native speakers, there was no significant difference in either way of dealing with the anxiety. In terms of the rating of the agent themselves, they seemed to like the agent kind of across the board. So these were some point Likert skills. So they found her to be likable, helpful, trustworthy, uh, satisfactory, and uh, they wanted to continue using it. And in terms of ease of use, they found it kind of in the middle, which we can still work on. Um, so what they actually said about it, though, is that kind of going back to the theory of the shared attention, uh, a lot of the participants actually alluded to this. So they said that uh, she kind of drew the attention away from me. So instead of just me being there, all eyes focused on me, now half the eyes are focused on her. So they felt a little bit less stressed from that. Um, also, it did relieve the workload. This is kind of partially expected since she was covering part of the slides. But at the same time, they felt like they didn't have to kind of memorize as much and weren't getting overwhelmed by this. And then for non-native speakers, this was especially uh, powerful. And actually, one of them said this was one of the greatest experiences they've ever had presenting. And they wish they had this kind of in their everyday, day-to-day -day presentations. 
So the participants seemed to like it, but what about the judges? How did other people feel about it? So we recruited 12 judges, four of which being expert judges who either uh, gave a lot of presentations in their work or taught presentation skills as part of academia. And what we did is we had them watch the videos of the participant presenting alone and presenting with the agent. And for each of these videos, we had them rate the overall quality, uh, the speech quality, the organization of the presentation, how much content they covered, their note reliance, so how much they were reading off their notes, um, and the timing and pacing of the presentation. And what we found is that across all conditions that the judges actually found that the agents significantly increased the overall presentation quality. Um, on top of that, we also found significant improvements in note reliance and speech quality uh, when they were presenting with the agent. Um, so kind of reasons behind this, some of the judges said, is that it broke up the monotony of the PowerPoint lecture. So for example, instead of me just sitting here for 10, 15 minutes just talking on and on and on, we now have this to kind of interject and break it up a little bit so you don't just hear my voice droning. Um, another thing is it helped you take your minds off the human's mistakes. So now you're not really paying attention if I'm flubbing my words or something like that because you're kind of still distracted by her a little bit. So it's helping you out a little bit. And this was especially the case for presenters who weren't as strong. So uh, we had kind of a variety of presenters in the videos that we had um, where some of them were weaker, some of them were stronger. And said for the not strong ones, it was nice to have a balance there of kind of an agent who was doing the perfect presentation, quote unquote, because the agent would never mess up its lines. It would never you know, speak out of turn, something like that. It wouldn't forget what it was saying um, compared to the human who might have to flub or read through their notes or get lost. So this is the start, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. Um, so specifically regarding to Angela, there was a lot of things the participants said that they wanted to improve on her. Like giving me a better voice. So exactly. Uh, so voice was actually one of the number one uh, complaints we had. Uh, people thought that it would be nice if there was some way to kind of add inflections to her voice to kind of change it up a little bit or have more control over it. Um, the other thing we wanted to add to the system was um, um, being able to help you out when you get stuck. That. So what we want to do is we want to add dynamic support to the system. So our idea is we're going to add some sensors to detect the presenter's nonverbal behavior and use that as cues for Angela to actually jump in and help them. So for example, if I'm here, I'm kind of staring at the ground, I'm like lost and it knows it's my turn to present, maybe Angela could jump in and say something about, oh, this is what you're supposed to say or just take up the conversation, uh, the PowerPoint from that point on because all of the notes will already be there. And then finally, we want to look at this in a longitudinal setting. So all of this was done in short little segments, but what happens after multiple interactions? Does the novelty effect of the agent wear off after you've seen it four or five times? And what happens to the presenters at the same time? Does it actually help with their stress? Um, does it kind of decrease over time the more they use the system then they can present on their own eventually? Or you know, does it wash out over time? So these are kind of things that we want to look at. So just to recap, uh, today we presented the Dynamic Duo system. This is a co-presentation system with a virtual agent, as seen here. Um, it was found to be uh, significant, uh, have significant improvement in anxiety for non-native speakers and increase the overall quality of the presentations across the board for both native and non-native speakers. So with that, we'll take questions. Uh, hi, uh, Edward C. from Spar Technologies. This is really interesting, fun work. Um, I was just wondering about the, the agent on the side, if it needs to be projected uh, like as a separate picture or if it's possible, if you, what would happen if you kind of put it as part of the presentation? Or maybe if the person just walked in you know, whenever they, they were about to say something? Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm curious, because it, it, it is quite a bit of setup you know, to set up yep. something like this, whereas you know, existing presentations today, um, you know, if you could make it work with that, then you'd, you'd have a huge impact there. Oh, yeah. Um, here, you want to do this? So, yeah, so in a specific setting like that, we want her to be a peer life side, like that is about social inbound interaction. But uh, as you say, it's, it's definitely doable in order for her to maybe appear as part of the presentation here. Um, so good to, to increase the portability of the system. So it's definitely doable. And also, um, the agent itself is built in as a plug-in to PowerPoint. So it would just be possible to move her to a different point of the PowerPoint presentation itself. Right now, it's just being projected onto a second PowerPoint screen. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. 
Hi, um, Danielle Wild, Southern Denmark University. Um, one thought that came up for me, you spoke about the benefits for the people presenting and they're clearly benefits that, that you share yourselves or, uh, or know people quite well who share them, so you've been able to study that quite closely. Um, what came up for me is when you spoke about the judges, um, this is clearly a novel thing that you're presenting and I wonder if they're not responding to the novelty of it. Yep. And as that novelty wears off, does it cease to have the impact that it's having? And have you thought perhaps about how you could continue to maintain that novelty somehow without moving into you know, extreme circus type operatics but somehow maintain that, that, that edge of um, novelty or surprise or difference that, that could enable it to continue to be effective? Um, okay. Um, so, so we do want to study that definitely as kind of our next steps to see if this novelty effect does wear off over time. Um, we have tried this also in a few other scenarios. We tried it in the classroom and we've kind of had the same positive response. Um, but again, that's the first time they saw it. So what we could do to kind of maybe freshen up a little bit is since the agent itself is actually kind of a self-contained little program from that that PowerPoint happens to call onto, um, we could have the agent be adjusted dynamically if they want it so we could change the agent's appearance. Maybe that will kind of freshen up a little bit. Um, and hopefully if we do things like improve her voice or something like that, it would just kind of help it in general, Wait, make so it a little more live. So just to add a little bit more on that, um, um, so what we get during our presentation, our interview with the judges, we actually do see the novelty effects, but it actually have a trade off as well. So why it actually increase the engagement of the presentation, but sometimes people are like more aware of her newness instead of uh, focus on what she's actually talking about. So there's like a two, um, two side of the effect there. Um, so, but at the same time, we think that um, with, with something like that, there's a limited way of, uh, in unlimited way, of actually adding variation in your presentation. So there's so many ways that you can actually involve her in different presentations. So maybe, get, so I think like it's based on how creative people is. It can be, it, something like that can be used uh, in a more different ways as well. Thank you. Hi, uh, Sean Andrus, University of Wisconsin. Um, so for me, one of the most nerve-wracking parts of a talk is the, this question-answer session. You know, it's very unpredictable. Uh, I might be asking a really mean question, you don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any way you think the agent could help in this, this part of the talk right now? That would be very hard, I think, because you'd have to do some NLP to try to understand what the question is and then kind of ad-lib on the fly what the agent would say in response. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, I guess so, but... Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what what we can do a uh, definitely easy solution would be able for her to have some kind of like pocket slides. You know, people maybe sometimes prepare some backup slides to uh, answer some questions. So is this sometimes that's something that you probably maybe not need to memorize, but um, have it on her so she can answer some of the predicted questions as well. But um, getting on into a spontaneous uh, answer for the uh, answering question it would be something quite hard, and it's actually quite interesting to do. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Chang Wo Kwon, uh, the student of KIST in Korea. Uh, in, in your uh, experiment, uh, you compare uh, just one person presenting and uh, human agent presenting, right? Uh, yes. Could you repeat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one question that why you 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 do not I include uh, oh, real human real. two human presenting in your experiment? Um, so this is partially due with the fact that we have random people coming in. So if we had um, kind of a human co-presenter to compare it against, it'd be hard because you'd have to assume that everyone is going to get along equally with that human co-presenter, okay. and also. I mean, the other thing is even if we recruited in like dyads and we had them act as co-presenters, again, you have the same problem where they could possibly not get along or not present very well with each other. So. Yeah, but
uh, it's definitely something we want to evaluate in the future to see uh, human Asian can compare to human and human. Um, so um, related to the interview that we did, um, so Pia, one of the benefits of having a virtual Asian like this, um, because she's very reliable, uh, unlike human Asian when you can predict, uh, when you can uh, behave in some unpredictable way. So if I say something out of the line, last laws are gonna be having a hard time um, trying to uh, follow up with that. So one of the benefits of having something like that is to, uh, in order to avoid a situation like that, but at the same time, we didn't have uh, the kind of like true dynamic duo that we had with the human-human uh, uh, collaboration. So it's something we want, definitely want to uh, study further. Thank you. Well, let's thank our three speakers <laughs> one more time, and especially thank them for doing the live demo. Yeah. <laughs>